Hey everyone, my name is Benj Heisch, and today we are checking out a third-party lens that is an f0.95. It is a 35 millimeter lens, which equals out to be about the equivalent of 50 millimeter on a full-frame camera. We are testing this out on the Fujifilm X-E4, and this is the Seven Artisans 35 millimeter f0.95. Now before we get started, I want to be clear that Seven Artisans sent this lens to me for review. They reached out to me asking if there were any lenses that I wanted to try out, and this lens has been on my list ever since I got the X-E4. While this video is not sponsored by Seven Artisans, this lens was provided to me for free by them. I do get to keep it, but no money exchanged hands. So. That is our disclosure for this particular video. And if you're interested in this lens, I will definitely put links for it down below. And while this video isn't sponsored by Seven Artisans, I do wanna let you know about the course that I have put together with my friends at Moments about photographing couples. It is about two hours long. Uh, we go on two different shoots and there's just a ton of information from editing to planning to slight bits of posing and getting to know my couples and how I work with all that stuff. And for the next couple weeks, the course is only 50 bucks, which if you have looked into any other educational type of course in the wedding photography world, you know that that is significantly cheaper than almost everything else out there. So if you are interested in that course, I will put a link to that below as well. And it would be a huge support for me if you checked it out. Now what's intriguing about this lens, obviously is anytime you're getting an f-stop that is lower than f1 or 1.4 even, you're getting into the territory of some pretty unique lenses like the Noctilux and all that stuff. I know that this is a general reference and it's not exactly uh, scientific or anything like that, but when you're using an APS-C crop sensored camera, you are getting less of that kind of full frame look. So if you are using an f1.4 lens on an APS-C camera like this Fujifilm X-E4, it's gonna look more like an f2 lens on a full frame camera. Now, there are a ton of other things that kind of go into it, but in its most simple terms, that is generally what the look is going to be like. If you are using an APS-C camera, you can use an f0.95 type of lens to replicate that more full frame look. Now, right off the bat, we will do a little bit of just kind of talking about the lens, uh, how it feels, all that good stuff. It is a manual focus only lens, but it is for that kind of native FX or XF or whatever mount for the Fujifilm system. So that part is built really, really well. You're not using some weird adapters or anything like that. Normally I would have a top down shot of this, but my X-E4 has actually been my top down camera for the last few videos. So we are just gonna be rolling with B-roll and this guy straight on. All that to say, um, you know, it fits on the camera really, really well. Size wise, it's great. The lens is definitely a little bit heavy, so you're not gonna pass the uh, Leica balance test, as I call it, but you're definitely not gonna pass the lens balance test on a small camera like this. So it might actually, you know, do better with a camera like the X-Pro3, I almost said X-Pro4, would be exciting if that camera came out. I would say that if you do have this with the X-E series, the grip is pretty much essential to have with that, you could have maybe get away with the thumb rest, but I do really, really appreciate having the grip on here. It makes this thing way easier to use. Now, one of the biggest annoyances about this lens is basically both the focus ring and the aperture ring. The focus ring is just really, really not dampened well. I mean, it feels good to turn, but there is just not a lot of resistance. It's smooth, it definitely doesn't catch anywhere, but that's kind of part of the problem is it just, it's way too loose, way too loose. It's really, really hard. And trying to get focus with something that is this kind of flimsy, uh, I guess flimsy is not the right word, but you know what I mean? It just is really, 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 yeah, 
has too much give. And then the second part is you can see this really, really ugly piece of tape here. Uh, I was going to replace it with a black piece of tape, but I wanted to use this piece of uh, gaff tape that is silver to remind me to talk about the fact that this has a clickless aperture. This thing is just so easy to move from 0 0.95 to f1.4 to whatever. Um, and there's no clicks, so there's no real resistance. I would love it if there was at least like at, at 0 0.95, some sort of like stop that, you know, made you click out of it or something, at least like full stop something. There was a ton of times when I first got this lens that it was just kind of like sticking in between, uh, you know, 0 0.95 and like 1.4. And then even times where it was probably like 2.5 and I was looking through the camera just going like, this is not very remarkable. I don't really understand. And then looked at it and went, oh, okay, that's why. I just decided, hey, the point of using this camera lens is to shoot it at 0 0.95. So I'm just gonna tape it to that aperture and we are gonna roll with it. Now, while we're talking about the aperture ring and the focus ring, I will add that being able to focus down to 0 0.37 meters is really, really fantastic. Being able to get really, really up close and take some portraits. So this right here, I don't know if this is even focusing because I can't see it, but this is how close you get, which is really great. Um, taking portraits and detail photos and stuff like that with a lens that is that shallow of, of depth of field and then also can focus that close is really kind of a, a real joy to use and kind of expands uh, the usage of this. I'm used to lenses from the Leica system that only focus down 2.7 meters. So it was definitely a nice sort of change for me as 0.7 meters is about right here and then 0.37 meters is about ooh, all the way up here. So pretty significant difference uh, in comparison to what I'm used to on my Leica cameras and definitely gave me some more options, uh, especially when photographing my kids and stuff like that that I don't usually have on my um, Leica system. Also, if this video has been helpful so far, please consider subscribing if you aren't already and leaving a like on the video. It definitely helps push this content out to more people and makes Google think that what I'm doing has actual relevance and value. So if you would be so kind to smash the like button or whatever the YouTubers out there say, I would very much appreciate that. I think there's two essentials for this camera. One, if you are using uh, this lens with this camera in particular, you're going to want to have a grip of some sort just because it's not super heavy, but it's definitely not light. But all that to say, having some sort of neutral density filter, which if you don't know, is basically just throwing sunglasses on your camera. This allows me to use this full sun and be able to shoot it at 0 0.95 and use this lens to its full potential. We are in the middle of a heat wave and if you see my skin glistening a little bit more, it's not because of a new skincare routine or a skincare routine in general. It is because it's probably about 85 degrees in my office and I had to turn off the AC unit to film this video. Shooting in full sun is pretty much only able to be happening because of this. You can actually see it right there as it crosses over the light. Now in terms of rendering and sharpness, this lens definitely isn't the sharpest lens. I wouldn't expect it to be at uh, such a fast aperture, but kind of at that like full body portrait length, uh, it is definitely a little bit harder to use. And you can see in these test shots that I did with the TT Artisan 50 0 0.95 and the TT Artisan 50 1.4, I compared both of those to show what a full frame 0 0.95 lens looks like. And then also what a full frame 50 millimeter f1.4 lens looks like, but both of those lenses perform better than this lens. Um, so I wasn't incredibly happy with the sharpness, but I guess you're not really going for ultimate sharpness when you're using this lens, you're going more for the look. It does a pretty good job. I would say at kind of that full body portraits. Um, and once 
the bokeh starts looking a little bit smaller towards the outside. It almost looks like when you're a kid and you're trying to color in the lines, you make the outside lines a little bit darker. But I would say that especially once you kind of focus on it a little bit closer and stuff like that, you make the bokeh a little less busy. It renders really, really well. And uh, it's something that I really, really did enjoy about this lens, especially at both its price point and its size. So I've definitely reviewed a lot of lenses on the channel and some of them I do end up selling, but for what it's worth, I do think this is a great lens that I will definitely be keeping around as long as I have a Fujifilm camera that has interchangeable lenses. There are definitely things that I really, really wish were improved upon. So if there is a Mark II version that ever comes out, I would definitely probably be in the market for it if it's something that they fixed for a small little setup here. It's really great and I am definitely happy with this lens. So thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions about this lens or how it compares to any of the other 50 millimeter equivalent lenses that I have used, uh, leave those comments down below. I will try to do my best. Again, I think I've probably owned about 15 different 50 millimeter lenses over the years now, so I have a lot to compare it to. And while it's definitely not the sharpest or it gives the best rendering or anything like that, it's definitely one that I will keep around um, to keep in this system. So give this video a like if you enjoyed the content, subscribe if you aren't already, and I will see you all on the next one.